man, JR's here. Yeah, <laughs> man, it feels good. Welcome back, bro. I know. It, it's kind of, I'm not going to lie. It's kind of crazy being on this side of the mic. Normally, I'm on your side, but, you know, we're going to have fun, me being the guest. Yeah. I love this. Did you, uh, last time we were here, did you have dreads or were you bald by then? Mm, I did. Yeah, I had locks. Yeah, I had locks. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I cut the locks in 2018. Really? T- no, 2017. Yeah, I cut the locks in 2017. That was a huge deal for me personally. It, it really? As a man that has hair. Yeah. Seeing you and your, your locks were not small locks. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long locks down to my butt. Yeah. To see you be like, you know, it's time for a change. Get him out of here. It really wasn't that. I was just balding. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, Dog, be, I'm not far away. Yeah, man. yeah. I'm going to be real with you. I was just balding, you know. Um, and then also I was living in Malaysia at that time, and I didn't have anybody to really take care of my hair. Like, big shout out to Tim Muir. Like, here in Utah, he took care of my hair. He made sure, like, um, you know, I was always on point. But when I moved to Malaysia, um, I didn't have that, you know, so it was very hard to get somebody to take care of my hair. And then I just, my hair just started thinning and, um, with the, you know, with stress and all that, like if I'm stressing about it thinning, so it's just thinning some even more. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, it's just time to cut it. And I cut it and I, yeah, I don't mind the rock the baldy right now, you know? So yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been a good, but I did like tear up a little bit because I started radio when I started my locks. So mm. that my journey, those journeys were interlocked you know no pun intended yeah um together so i like that's why i like at first i'm like yeah i'm gonna cut my hair i did it on the show uh, you know in malaysia but then after a while i'm like wow this is kind of like crazy i started my locks when i started radio so it's kind of a little more than um than just cutting my hair dang man yeah and uh i mean i'm almost there i gonna lie man my 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 forehead's pushing back <laughs> Like it happens, it happens. If you I just, get to a six, it got, it gotta go. Yeah, you gotta embrace it. You gotta, you have to embrace it because you know um, it's all about being confident in who you are. You know, at the end of the day, like at first I was like, man, this is my identity. You know, this is all people know. And then I was like, you know what? Forget it. It's yeah. me. You know, I'm gonna cut my hair. I'm not just my hair. Yeah. You know. Um, and uh, yeah, so I cut it, and yeah, I'm still doing well it's like what women say right i'm more than just titties and ass yeah exactly exactly you know like so like yeah I, even though that was a big part of my image like everybody knew me for the locks you know um when i when i cut it yeah it, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't too crazy for people that was a fan of me like oh my gosh you cut your hair why did you do that everybody embraced it like i embraced it yeah yeah you um I want to I want to know when did you touch down in Utah? Cuz you're originally from Virginia, right? Yeah, originally from Virginia, but I man, I traveled radio, I traveled all over, bro. Like I traveled um I went from Virginia to North Carolina to Illinois, then Utah. Um then Malaysia, then you back to Utah, then Virginia, then uh, now I'm in uh the UAE, Abu Dhabi and Dubai. So, um yeah, I'm I've traveled a lot in the last 10 years. Um I touched down first in Utah in 2014. And I came from Peoria, Illinois, from a job out there. I was working for a radio station, 98.5 Kiss FM. Um, E-Rock heard me. Uh, How did that happen? Is he just, you see a resume or what? So you, you it's, it's like any radio job, you send your demo in and they hear it. And when they, when, when you uh, send it in, they like it. They talk to you, interview you. Um, I, I had two interviews and yeah, they hired me on the spot. And then you that's know. when you moved out here. Yeah, that's when I moved out here. I took a U-Haul truck. Um, towed my car, uh, or pulled my car, and yeah, it was it was it was pretty it was pretty crazy. Like that was my first big trip of taking a U-Haul and driving everything down. Yeah, that's I'm just thinking about being being. I, I mean, 2014, you were pretty young at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was 2014. <laughs> I was 23, 24, 23 or 24. Yeah, and packing up and and leaving. But before that, you even left your home state. Oh, yeah. I've been gone from home since I was 18. Wow. Yeah. So I did one year of college and then um, I was doing mass co- communication study and that. And then I, I was fortunate enough to have a communications program in high school, my mm-hmm. junior and senior year. So when I was learning it in college, I was like, oh, man, this is kind of the same thing. So I just took a leap of faith and moved to North Carolina, did an internship there. Um, that didn't pan out. Um, and then I got an opportunity to 
do a part-time job in North Carolina there, and I launched a station, and I was the night guy there for a year. And then the Peoria came calling, was like, hey, you want full-time? I sent my demo, like, every every uh, other gig. Excuse me. Um, every other gig. And, uh, yeah, they brought me out there, um, and I stayed there for two years um, in Peoria. Yeah, so, like, I was rolling. I mean, I'm still rolling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, but, yes, yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's kind of getting old. <laughs> well, is, it, is it scary, though, like, to uproot, I mean, your whole life to something that it, in, in radio – is for me what I'm learning is very not. How do you say it without like being? I know what you mean. You know what I mean? <laughs> not, it's not certain. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With radio, you, it's a passion. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's a gift and a curse. Um, with me, um, I'm I've been fortunate enough to never get fired from a place. I've I have industry call uh, peers that have been fired, laid off, especially during the pandemic. Yeah, I've been fortunate enough to to never that's never happened to me. But I've also averaged about two years at each gig. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but. Um, with me, it's it's always a challenge for me. You know, I never wanted to. I never wanted to. Once it start feeling easy, like uh, this is routine, that's when I kind of start looking for the next thing, because I never wanted to. Um, I just didn't want it easy. You know, yeah. I wanted. I wanted a challenge. You know, this is radio is my passion, and I always was like, all right, I'm trying to be the next thing. I'm trying to be the next big thing not not in the sense of i'm trying to be the star i know my name is jr the superstar but i it's, it's not about that it's just more of a challenge like can i put out content out there that people gravitate to and relate to yeah. and be genuinely me because especially in radio sometimes especially in radio now like you do have these characters that people try to create and try to be like this uh person that they can't keep up with yeah. and after a while you start doing that years after years after years they can't get away from the character, mm -hmm. you know, and and I never wanted to be that, you know. So Jr. the superstar, yes, I'm Jr. the superstar, but Jr. is the same person as Jr. the superstar, like you know what I mean. It's just maybe maybe a little more over exaggerated, you know, uh, but it's still me. Nobody yeah. could be like, oh, I saw him at Walmart or I saw him at you know the store around the corner. He was a totally different person. No one can ever say that about me, um, because yeah, it's just a further extension of myself. I feel like uh, when you when you're not yourself, it's hard to replicate what you what you're portraying. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a hard thing to do, man. And then that's when you lose authenticity, and then that's when people don't mess with you. Exactly. Think about like if you're an asshole, be an asshole throughout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Think about it this way: like you know how you you create a lie, and then like you know people start asking questions, and you got to keep on lying, yeah. and now you got to remember that lie. Like that's how it is if you creating this persona or this lie on radio. Like people gonna start poking holes at your story you're like no nah, i don't sound like you or you said this yesterday or you normally it was this way you know because yep. it's a privilege to be on air right yeah. so people are giving you the time of day to be in their lives you know either going to work coming home from work whenever time you're on so you gotta you have a responsibility to make sure that you are giving your true self mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying now how much a dj or a radio announcer want to give that's up to them you know i know some djs are that are successful that don't talk about their personal life um i'm not one of them i like to tell people what's going on with me um i do keep some stuff to myself you know on social media and on on radio yeah but yeah like i think i think the the most important part um, is to try to give some of yourself to your audience because they're giving you their time. That's why I said it's always a privilege to be on air. I agree with that 100%. Yeah. Um, just even down to, like, the callers that we get, like, uh, we have frequent flyers, right, that call in. And, yeah. But I don't treat them like they're just, um, oh, it's so-and-so again. It's like, yo, man, like, thanks for calling in again, man. What's going on? How's your day going? Bro, not too many people will call the radio station unless they get you giving something away that they Facts. want. You know what I'm saying? So for them to call and say, hey, how's your day going? They feel like they they have a connection with you like, yo, that's my friend. Yep. I want to check in on them and make sure they're good. And that's when I know that I'm doing a good job. When they be like, hey, how's it going? You know, right in, yeah, obviously I leave that for the corporate heads and the big heads. They care about that. What I care about is the audience that come in and say, um, that calls up and just like, yo, you brighten up my day. Oh, yeah. I love your laugh. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I know they're listening and I know I'm building a rapport on air with them. Even though I'm not beside them, I'm 
not in the car and I'm talking to thousands of people. You know what I'm saying? They feel like they're a part of the show. And that's all. Well, that's all, that's the only thing I, I believe in is really let the listener be the star in your show. Yep. Um, and they'll pay it back by calling up and, 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 and hanging out with you on air. Do you uh do you have family that's in music or radio? Um or yeah, so I have a lot of family in music um and and I don't have any family in radio, but I do have a lot of DJs and singers and rappers and stuff. I but my parents are not like into music at all. <laughs> so how did you how did you get um, into it? So it's crazy. So I wasn't the best student in high school. <laughs> so my brother was like, "Yo, you like to talk. You're very entertaining. You're a people person. You should try that radio program." Um, next year in your high school and then I applied and then next thing like I noticed like at first I'm like oh this is a music class it's gonna be easy but they we had our own radio station that broadcast throughout the, the county in Henrico County in, in, in Virginia um, and like you know school bus uh, would listen to our sta- uh, station um, teachers would listen to our station because there's no profanity obviously yeah. no, no risky music or anything we made sure it was pretty clean and it was ran by the students so we had our own that's shows dope. we was picking the music making rotations and stuff like that and that's what I fell in love with like oh I could do this for a career yeah. you know and then I had the opportunity to intern at my local radio station um, my senior year and yeah, that was great. You know, I had a ball doing that. And I'm like, yeah, this is what I want to do, you know. But I'm going to tell you right now, radio, coming in radio, like out the gate is not easy because you got to build that experience, right? And when I, my first internship, I was working like six jobs. I was selling direct TV. I was working at Finish Line um, as a man, assistant manager. I was also catering for Panera Bread. I know I'm dropping a lot of brands, but oh well. <laughs> uh, but like I was doing, I was doing a lot. Cause yeah. just to live out my dream, you know, and the crazy thing is like, and I had the pressure of my parents not believing in the dream. Mm, you know what I'm saying? That's what I was going to ask next. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, they, <laughs> my mom was, is a sweetheart. So she never told me like any, like a, hey, you know, she made sure to like, she'll help me out. But my dad wanted me to go to the military because, you know, like I said, I left college after one year. So he was like, you need structure, you need this. And I'm like, nah, I'm telling you, this is the dream. Watch me work. Believed in me and, um, yeah, and watch it pop. And look at look at where I'm at now. You know, I've, I've, been, I've been in radio over two countries, you know, UAE and Malaysia. Um, I've been all over the U.S., you know, in different markets. Um, I travel probably more than the military right now the last 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, it, but... I don't blame my dad for that. I always say he was putting his fears onto me. Mm. Um, he just wanted me to make sure I can support myself, you know. So I didn't, I didn't, I don't, I don't, I don't blame him. We we have a great relationship. Yeah. Um, I don't blame him for putting that fear, but that's what parents do. They like, ah, they they panic more than you because they want to make sure you do better than them. I think people that care about you do that. Yeah, right? exactly. I will put my fear off on you like let's say let's say you guys want to go out it's a friday night y'all like man we got the we, we got the henny let's go out let's yeah, go have yeah, a book. yeah and i'm scared i'm like dog it's it's three o'clock in the morning i i'm, I'm trying to go home yeah like i there's nothing good out there it's me putting my fear on you guys yeah right it's the same thing i think it's but the but if you're married that that, that's probably the smart thing to do let's yeah. stay home yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying yeah, facts <laughs> So is, you, yeah. is your dad in the military? Uh, no, that's what took me <laughs> off. Like I'm like, bro, you ain't even do that. Like, why are you bugging me about the military? No knock on the military. Thank you for your service. I really appreciate it. But it, it just wasn't for me. Are you, you still know? a U.S. citizen? Uh, you yeah, yeah, I'm still. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just I work out of the country, okay. but I'm still a U.S. citizen. I say you yeah. pledge allegiance somewhere else, man. No, 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 no. no. I'm still a U.S. citizen. Yo, are you are you low key kind of scared? Like, what if what if we go to war like tomorrow? Um, in my contract, I can bounce whenever I want. Yeah, yeah, so if, if but I'm so- saying like, how can you get back home? If- oh yeah, I found a way. Okay, I found a way. Yeah, yeah, and they got embassies everywhere, so I, I'm not really tripping about that. All right, you know, you can't live in fear. If you live in fear, you'll be scared of yourself. Can I? Can I admit something right now? Yeah, I thought the Ukraine was in Russia. No, it's beside it. Okay, this yeah, it used to be before though. The USSR, yeah. right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. the night eighties. I'm not going to act like I know. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I don't really dig into all that, yeah. the politics and stuff like that. I try to stay out of that. Um, you know, I just try to live my best life, best I can. Um, and like I said, I'm not really too worried about that. 
on my end of yeah. me getting back home safely. But I see him doing the math in his head right now. He's like, oh man, I didn't think about this. No, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm not really tripping. Like, because in Malaysia they had they had like when I was living in Malaysia they had a little problem um, locally, you know, um, with the elections and stuff like that that I couldn't talk about or do or, or, or wear a certain color. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. Like like I said, man, like when you go to these other countries and, and, and learn other cultures, like you can't live in fear because you won't live when you're trying to live. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like and that's what I'm doing when I go I'm going to these countries. I'm trying to get experience in not just my field, but also culture. You know, um I think though I, I I would say not to pat myself on the back, I would feel I would say that I'm a pretty open minded person because I've been to all these different places and all these different countries and saw and saw all these different cultures. You know what I'm saying? Not even just not even just in different countries, but even it's a different vibe from Virginia to Utah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, let's be real. Like when I first moved to Utah in 2014, it was very hard to find a person of color, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But now coming back, seeing, I'm like, Oh, okay. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Oh, let's go to the cookout. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it, 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 it's I called love, barbecue over here. Yeah, oh, no, barbecue. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, it's cool to see the growth, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, in the country and everywhere. So yeah, I, I love that. I love that. Um, and well, well, I was gonna ask, what was it like being a black man in Malaysia? Um, that was, I would say, is more difficult there than where I'm at now because in Malaysia, um, they didn't know if I was Nigerian or I was African American, and why I said, the reason why I say it was a little difficult because stereotypes, you know, they thinking Nigerian people are scamming them and stuff like that, which was a stereotype in Malaysia. Yeah. Um, so once I spoke, they're like, oh, you're American. Okay, hey, hey, you know what I'm saying? But they were very cold to me before I speak, you know. Um, but but that's something that, you know, I picked up on. It's not They're not blatant with it, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, that's something I picked up on. Um, but, yeah, it's a great country. Like, I can't say many bad things about it. What was, uh, what was something that... Um, might be a stereotype on Malaysia that you were like you going in. Did you have any, like any expectations? Were you like, oh, it's gonna be like this or it's gonna be like that? No, nah, not really. I was really nervous about my eating habits because I'm allergic to a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? So like shrimp or shellfish, I should say. Um, you yeah, know, that sucks, man. yeah, yeah. So I was just, I was kind of, and I'm a, I'm a picky eater, you know, and I, I don't really eat a lot of Asian food. I do now because I'm kind of expanding my palate when I was living there but I, that's what I was nervous about like oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to you know eat or what I'm going to eat I was nervous about what I'm going to eat but you know like I said you just go funny story first time I went there um, my boss took me out to eat with his family it was him his wife two kids um, so they're bringing out food. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm not trying to be rude. So I'm eating everything that they're bringing out. I didn't order anything. They ordered everything, right? So um, I didn't know that uh, prawn was shrimp. <sighs> yeah. Oh, no. So, I, so I'm so i eating the prawn, and I'm like, and I, I know this feeling because I like, I've only had it four or five times, but I know the feeling when I eat shrimp or shellfish. Like, it's only one type of feeling, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm like, hey, is this shrimp? And then he looks at me, he's like, well, it's prawn. I mean, same family, you know, all nonchalant. And then my stomach just turned upside down. So I'm running, I'm running to the bathroom or whatever, and I vomited all over the bathroom. Oh, I man. mean, the stall, like, oh. everywhere, and I felt bad. Yeah, um, I'm not going to lie. I did not clean it up. Oh. I, did not, <laughs> I did not clean it up. The disrespect. But, uh, but I try I try to do the best cleanup as possible, but I was just like, yo, this is so embarrassing or whatever. And then I got back to the table. He's like, uh, yeah, man, you know you don't have to eat every day i'm like well you know i was just trying to be respectful i don't know anything yet you know because it's like the first day of me and being in malaysia i was like i don't know anything yet i didn't want to be disrespectful he's like no man if you're gonna get sick we need you here <laughs> so are there like and this this is a really ignorant question but are there like monkeys just on the street no but if you go to batu if you <laughs> don't go to, laugh at me babe <laughs> if you go to batu caves um which is a, a temple um in a cave uh <laughs> It, it's a whole bunch of monkeys there. Like people feed them, and they, they'll steal your stuff. Like they'll take your hat unless you give them bread. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're trained like that. Yeah, I don't know if they trained or they just picked up on it because everybody goes there when they go to Malaysia. Yeah, um, it's a lot of steps. Like it's a lot of steps. I did. I walked up, but I was drenched in sweat. Dang. Yeah, yeah. But by two K's is a lot of monkeys. Humid out there. Uh, oh yeah, very yeah. 
I think of a uh, um, and maybe it's not the same area, but uh, Mortal Kombat. But I think that was Thailand. Yeah, definitely Thailand. Definitely Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> but it's close. It's close. Yeah, yeah it's close. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what about uh, Abu Dhabi, man? Like, what, oh, what's, Abu- what's been the experience there? It's been great, man. Like, I'll say this. Like, it's very fast paced. Like, Abu Dhabi and Dubai is very. They only an hour apart. So I live in Abu Dhabi, but I, my show is in the whole UAE, all seven Emirates. And damn, so you people in Dubai listen to you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you run into any princes yet? Uh, no, 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 no. I haven't. I haven't. <laughs> but like, it's fast paced out there. Like, it's crazy. The Lamborghinis, everything you see on Instagram, everything you see on TV, like it's legit. You know, beautiful views. Um, the weather's pretty hot in the summer, but like it's always something going on Monday through Sunday. Like, don't matter what day it is, it's a party, it's a brunch. Like Meek Mill was out there last week. Uh, before him, it was Tiger, Rick Ross. Like, it's always somebody coming up, doing a show, popping up, um, showing love. So, man, I- I'm trying to figure out what that's com- what's it compared to. So, like. Obviously, Dubai is like the big city, right? Yeah, Versus I guess Abu you would Dhabi. say New York City. And then what's Abu Dhabi? Abu Dhabi would be L.A. L.A.? Yeah, yeah, Abu Dhabi would be L.A. More chill, laid back, you know. Um, New York is like in your face, fast pace. Yeah, yeah. But they only an hour apart. Have drive. you uh, have you DJed out there yet? Uh, I haven't DJed out there yet. Have um, you tried? Yeah, I do. I do my, um, I DJ on my show uh, in the afternoons every Friday. Um, for for twenty minutes, um, on the way home. But yeah, that's the only time I DJ. Yeah, I haven't tried because I, I had some situation. They really strict with the COVID stuff. Like you can't dance and stuff like that. Right really? Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Dubai too? Yeah. No, Dubai is pretty open. Dubai is pretty open. But I ain't gonna drive no hour to try to figure it, <laughs> figure that out. You know what I'm saying? Like once Abu Dhabi's open and I can get in there, then I then I go to Dubai. But I just yeah. feel like there's all it takes is just one person to be like, yo, I like this dude. Let's. Throw him some cash. Yeah. And then you just set. Yeah, it's like, it's it, it depends, man, because it's kind of like, I would say it's kind of like L.A. Like, you know how L.A. kind of have the people, like, the industry, like, oh, yeah, get up with me. You know, I see you when I see you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like that, too. Um, so you, you just got to you just gotta live, you know. What's been the biggest challenge um, in your career? Like, whether it be change, moving, whatever it is, what's been, like, the big challenge for you? I would say the biggest challenge for me personally is moving and it's not in sacrifice because when I sacrifice the biggest, the, the biggest challenge is moving, but the sacrifice that I have to take with my personal life, with my family and all that, you know, like I am, you know, I do miss birthdays. I do miss, you know, uh, family reunions. I'm not in those pictures that everybody's posting in the group. Like, Oh, you remember this? You know? So that's, that's the biggest, uh, that's the biggest challenge is being able to accept that. Like, yeah, I'm I'm living my life and doing my thing, you know, in this radio thing. But, you know, success has a price, you know, and that's that's the price that I have to pay is missing some of those birthdays, holidays, um, seeing my nephew go from, you know, knee level to almost as tall as me in a in a split second. You know, so yeah, that's that I would say missing out on important family events would be the challenge. What um what's success to you then? Like what is that measure for you? Um success it's funny that you asked that. Like I'm just I like I just want to be happy. Success that that's that's what success is to me, being happy. You know, um it's not about money. Of course I love, you know, make bank. <laughs> but yeah. but it's it's really about being happy in my own skin and 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 living every day and not being like, "Oh man, I got to go to work." Oh man, I got to do this. Oh man, it's Monday. Like, I never got, I never, I never want that feeling where I'm just waking up like, oh, here we go again. It's Monday. Like, five more days to the weekend. Like, I never want that feeling. If I wake up happy every day, I'm successful. Are you happy now? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm definitely happy now. Like, um, you asked me this about a while ago. Maybe not. You know, <laughs> but like, cause, cause, like I said, with with moving, man, it's it's tough. It's mm-hmm. tough. You know, with the with your personal life, um, you know, making moves and missing out on things, you know. So yeah, but no, I'm definitely happy now. Um, but yeah, back back, like you asked me that like last year or two years before that. Yeah, it's it's very hard just making those moves and stuff and missing out on things. Yeah. Well, I think any time that you start something new, a radio is not new to you, but yeah. it's new. It's new when you're in a different country. Yep. You have a different boss, different expectations. Yep. Right. 
different way of doing things, different music, right? Like, yeah. Um, that's always a challenge, and I think that as long as you can like stick through those hard times, right? Yeah. And remember that, because I'm, I'm use me as an example. When I first came up here and did this, I, trash, and you know, here <laughs> having those having those hard conversations, right? Yeah. But those conversations that make you make you better, yeah. Right. There are there were times where I was like, damn, am I cut out for this? You yeah. know what I mean? Do I want to just throw in the towel? Yeah. You know what I mean, so I, I I completely understand what you're what you're saying. Um, what what is something that you're really proud of? Um, something I'm really proud of. Dang, that's a. I've been uh, ratings wise. I guess I would say I'm really proud of. Like I've been. I've never had a problem in in, in any market. You know. Um. I've. I would say I've left the staple, a stamp, I should say, in each market that I've been in. Um. That's something I'm proud of. It ain't about. It's not about the fame. It's. It's more about the connection I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. You know. I. I. It, that people feel like they. You know. We're friends. From listening to my show, you know, uh, they could see me on the street. Like, y'all remember when you was here? Like, you know, what I'm saying, yo, that, it was so dope hearing you. Da da da. Dog, like, that's something that you did do here, bro. Cause, um, I was a, uh, I was engineering a podcast, and this happens a lot, man. As soon as they hear that I work for the station and stuff, they're like, I remember that dude, Jr. And specifically, oh, don't hype me up. Don't no, hype me up. No, <laughs> hey, hey, no cap, no cap, no cap at all. Uh, it was um the the owner of Asylum Forty Nine. Okay. And he was like, I remember when we had uh we had a couple people from your guys' station come out and I'm naming off names and he's like, JR, that's the guy. And uh he spoke highly of you. And Dope. so did another guy from a like a Ken Garf dealership. Like these guys, they talk highly of you. Dope. Um and for me, that's like that's a huge thing, man. When when people you know, we understand ratings, we understand numbers and stuff like that, but when people yeah. are like, That's a good dude or that dude left an impact on me. That's where I feel like we win. Yeah, and that's and that's 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 why I said that's success for me. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, I let the the higher ups deal with the ratings and stuff like that. I'm more worried about the connection with the people, you know, in the market that I'm in. You know, that's more important to me because like it's, it is a privilege to be on air. You know, so yeah. Do you feel like you're connecting with the people of Dubai? And uh, Saudi, uh, what is it? Not Saudi Arabia. But yes, two different places. <laughs> <laughs> Dubai is in the United <laughs> Arab Emirates. So uh, Abu Dhabi, UAE. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nah. Yeah. So I am actually. So my first rating period, I've gained. Hold on. Another naive, stupid question. Did yeah. They, did they speak English? Yes. Okay. Eighty percent of don't. I'm not gonna say eighty percent. It's more um, foreigners than locals. Okay. And U UAE is only fifty years old. Yeah, so is, is isn't it, that the high school test that we take? The UAE? Oh, I don't know. I take SOLs when I was in high school. Yeah, all right. I'm just saying, I, and that's actually the standard in Virginia. It's not a special test or anything. Uh, <laughs> just saying. No, I'm like, maybe you are shit out of luck. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but um, no, no, no. So yeah, so my first, um, my first rating period, I took from the leading station. 30,000 listeners, and then um, the second station, I took 10,000. So I, I gained 40,000 listeners my first rating period um, in the market. Damn. So, like, it's coming. They, like, they love the energy, you know, because uh, I, just, I just, I'm just being myself. You yeah. know, I'm high energy, all, as always, you know. So, uh, yeah, I think they're liking it, you know. And I get calls. They call me, oh, yeah. You know, I wonder what they're doing now because I'm off a month, you know, so hopefully they're missing me and I come back. Yeah, why are you off? Why are you in the uh, United States? Oh, man, I just wanted to come visit, show love, spend time with my family. We just went on a family trip uh, last week in Virginia. We went skiing and snowboarding and stuff like that. So, yeah, like I said, I'm taking the time. Now that I have uh, days, because, you know, it's, it's more when you work outside of the country, they give you way more days than they give you in the States. Like Off? Yeah, off. Oh, dope. Yeah, yeah, like they encourage you to take holidays and stuff, unlike the states. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, kidding, kidding. Man, let's jump them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just, I, I, just, I took the time to spend this time with my family, you know, because like it is different for me now living in the UAE um, and being away because of um, I was home before I left, like from high school, leaving after high school till. The year before I left to go to Abu Dhabi, um, I was actually in Virginia. 
So I I never had to, I never had to worry about like I never had to think about my parents coming just popping up on a Sunday eating dinner or whatever ordering food and us hanging out. They used to do that like every other weekend. Yeah. So I never had that before before I moved back. You know. So now that I left that and went to the UAE, I'm start I, I missed that. You mm. know what I'm saying? Because it's something that I had before I left. So yeah, it's, a, it's it hits me harder now that I'm in the UAE. It hits me a lot harder now because of I had experienced that, you know, being older and them coming over and visiting and stuff like that. Well, I mean, parents aren't getting any younger either. Exactly. And my and my grandparents aren't either. You know what I'm saying? So You have both your grandparents still? Um I have my uh, my dad's grandparents, yes, my grandfather died on my mom's side five five years ago. Yeah, yeah. So um I always get jealous of the the people that have that relationship with their grandparents. I didn't grow up with my grandparents. Yeah. You know, both of mine uh, passed away in 96. Okay. So really early, and uh, I didn't re- really have that grandparent. Yeah, you um, have to cherish. Uh, I mean, I, so, like, I, I'm realizing I am blessed in my situation because I've seen generations, two, one, two, yeah, two generations of sets of marriages. You know what I'm saying? So both of my grandparents are married and together. My parents are married and together still. Um, you know, in today's time, it's sometimes you you know, I've talked to people that are like, oh yeah, I, my mom and dad are not together, or my grandparents are not together. So I've been, I, I tr- I've I'm truly been blessed to have, you know, to see those strong foundations in marriage and I, I think like the crazy thing I, I never really been in a relationship right and I, and yeah it might be at fault that I, I've seen those pillars you know what I'm saying yeah. like, I'm like well I know what a great marriage looks like <laughs> so I'm not gonna mess with you because you don't look like that you yeah. know what I'm saying but but at the same time you know it, it shows me I do know what I want in a partner because I see three different uh successful relationships yeah you know and healthy relationships you know what i'm saying and i don't want to be one of those relationships that break up with my partner you know um over hard times so like some things happen though jr <laughs> something it, so, so there's some things that you so, can't control are man. you saying i'm just like out of it i'm naive like what i think that you don't hold yourself back from from an experience oh yeah you know no, I mean? no, no, no. I, i'm not i'm not doing that like things are changing now you know my perspective is changing now um, but I just need a partner that knows what she wants. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like nowadays, like pfft, do you though? Can't she can't she figure that out with you while she's with you? No. Maybe you open her mind up to something that she didn't even know was there. No. Here's the thing. In 2022, I feel like I feel like you should. It's a lot of games. It's a lot of games being played. Tinder, Hinge, whatever. There is a lot of games being played on both sides, men and female. Like on both sides, there's a lot of games being played. The dating game, you know what I mean. So when a woman comes to me and be like, even if it's like I want something casual, I don't want a relationship. This is what I want. That's cool. I can I can respect that. But when you playing games where it's like oh, I don't know what I want, I don't. You know what I'm saying? That's the game I don't like to play. Like if you up front with me and let me know, because I'm gonna be that way. I'm like yo. I want this. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to be married. Oh, no. my gosh, JR. Right off the bat? Huh? Y'all, I want to be married in two years. No, don't get a time limit. It's just like, it's more just saying, I'm not dating to have fun. I'm not okay. dating here to go out to the clubs and stuff and pay dinners and stuff like that. And you just want to have fun. Like, I'm not well, looking isn't for dating, fun. Dating is about having fun, though. No, it's about having fun. But what I'm saying is, I'm not here to be your how can I explain this without sounding like a jerk <laughs> or cheap all right <laughs> I'm just not here to be your fun guy like I am if we're dating if we're dating if we're dating you know to 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 be something serious I'm okay with that but so, some sometimes like I said both sides because men play games too just to get the cookie let's be real you know what I'm saying I don't like, know I'm, I'm I've been out the game for so damn long I wouldn't know what to do ex- in this in this generation of dating yeah yeah like and, and, now you got to get on the, now with the pandemic like you got to get on the t- you got to get on the tenders you got to get on the hinge and you got to decipher and a lot of people get their representative right and what I mean by that is the first couple of months you getting the person they want you to see you're yeah. not actually getting in that person right so you got to be careful you got to you really have to be careful in this dating scene um 
like now because it's just so many games being played and so many people are trying not to get hurt so that's why they're playing the game like mm. oh I'm gonna wait three days before I text her like no if you like the girl text her like yeah. why are you waiting three days you know what I'm saying in that three day period after you got the number another guy might have got her, her attention you know what I'm saying like um, I heard Mike Tyson say something pretty cool in his uh in his podcast. Children? Huh? I'll eat your children? No, 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 no. Oh. He said something on his podcast where he was talking about relationships. Um, and I this man was pretty I, I can't remember who's interviewing, but he was saying, like, why can't you why can't you be vulnerable while you're dating? Why can't you tell them how you feel? You know what I'm saying? Like you're just being a coward by trying to play this game and try to try to just give them what they want like nah be yourself show them who you are and if you get hurt so be it like yeah. you move on to the next after you get hurt you know what i'm saying like and that's kind of how i've been rolling lately like all right i'm gonna give up my i'm gonna be open and honest and i and i and i would want the same thing for my partner have you had any dates in uh abu dhabi oh yeah 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 definitely definitely how, how is the women out there how great are the women? phenomenal i love it yeah yeah phenomenal and they like the ones I've met know what they want. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, this is what I want. This is what I see in a husband. Da, 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 da. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or, hey, I'm trying to be casual. This is what I want. Blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm um, not saying it's their culture, but I've I've seen more people being direct there. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's a casual thing. They've been they're straight up tell you, hey, man, I'm only going to be here for a couple months. So, like, you know what it is. You know, um, and that's all I want. It's just someone to be direct with me, you know. Um, I don't want that, hey, we texting, we figuring things out. Oh, I don't know what I want. I'm trying to fit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't got time for that, man. You know, I'm getting a little older. You know? <laughs> well, it's Yeah, I mean, it sounds like, I mean, you're so fast-paced in, in your career and what you're doing. You're very strong-minded in, in that field. Yeah. It's going to take a special woman to, to come on board with that. Exactly. So wherever she's at. I need you here. <laughs> <laughs> what's the next moves, man? What, what's uh, what's next for for Jr. Uh, man, I really don't know, man. Are you coming back to the states? Oh yeah, I'll eventually come back. I'm definitely not staying in the UAE forever, ever, 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 ever. Yeah, I'll eventually come back. Yeah. Well, you got to, man. Yeah, yeah. We need more of this, man. Yeah, I'm I'm down to chop it up anytime, man. I, I like being on this side. I can just say whatever I want. I don't have to think. You ask me all the questions. You, you ain't got to uh, edit anything. Yeah, I don't have to edit anything. <laughs> yeah, you do all the editing. You know what is is, is funny is that I was um I was on our YouTube channel and I, I came across the video with you and Latu and you guys were um backstage doing I think it was Summer Jam doing yeah. the backstage interviews. Was it the game? I think it might have been game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, was it Lil John? Oh yeah, we did Little John I too. Think Lil yeah, John was yeah, the one that I was see. the one. That, yeah, I think that was the same show. Yeah, I think that was the same show. Um, tell me, tell me about uh, an interview that you did that kind of impacted you. Um, actually, the Logic one, which is on the U ninety two website. Uh, I mean YouTube. That one it taught me a valuable lesson as well. So that one was actually my biggest interview in in case of uh, in terms of views. So I think it's like it was like thirty five thousand views. Sheesh. Um, it went off. Um, actually, Bangarang helped me with that. He sent that to uh, um, Logic Fan Club. Oh dang. Yeah, yeah, and 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 it went off. Um, but don't read the comments. <laughs> <laughs> don't read the comments because like I learned something because I wasn't a huge. I'm a huge Logic fan now, but at that time I was not a huge Logic fan. Um, but I love. I love interviewing people. So I, I did my research, you know, try to pick up on everything. But um, I messed up in the interview. And he didn't call me out on it. But I messed up in the interview talking about one of his songs where I thought he was talking about a woman. But he was actually talking about nicotine as a metaphor. Uh -huh. Yeah. So and he 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 kindly said, oh, no, I was actually talking about this. And then kept it, kept it going. Yeah. But the comments killed me. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a, the whole, that was, it was like a, 15, 20 minute interview. Everybody in the comments are worried about that one little thing. Yeah. Uh, some people in the comments have my back. Like, yo, he told he told like he dropped the project that he was releasing in that interview that nobody knew about. You Dang. know what I'm saying? So I think that's why I went off. Cause he kind of gave me some stuff that, you know, we cause we were just chopping it up, having a conversation. Yeah. And he gave me some stuff that no one knew about. You know, because he did 
even in that interview, he talks about not liking interviews because he would come in when he was first in the game and people wasn't really respecting him. Uh, when he was doing interviews with magazines, just the intern and stuff like that. Yeah. So he talked about, you know, treating everybody with the same respect, no matter how big or small they are, you know. And, um, yeah, man, it was it was a great interview. So, yeah, that was a big one for me. One that you didn't like at all? One that I didn't like? Ugh. If you if you want to tell. No, nah, I, I don't care. I, I'll say uh, YG. And it wasn't him. It just... Yeah, okay, it was him. It was him, but it wasn't. I'll just tell the story real quick. <laughs> All right, so YG interview, I, I interview YG. He's so chill, so mellow, you know what I'm saying? And I'm so energetic. Yeah. He was bringing my energy down, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I'm like trying to pull out everything, make him laugh, do whatever. And he just was not going for it. Um, and yeah, like I thought it was a crappy interview because the energy wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? And then at the end of the interview, he's like, "Yo, great interview, bro." And I'm like, "No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Why is you lying? <laughs> like, no, it wasn't." So that one, it, it had nothing to do with him. Yeah, it was more just me, like being a perfectionist. Like I thought that that was my first time dealing with somebody that was, you know, not too cool for the room, but just so mellow and so chill. Yeah. Um, where I was like. Oh, I don't know if this is going to work, you know. I think that's a timing thing too, right? Like this dude probably had a crazy long night. Yeah. He was probably tired. I had this with a young gravy. Yeah. So he just he literally just woke up, came here to do the the interview, and then on top of that, that was the day young Dolph got shot. And uh, him and young Dolph were homies. Okay, yeah. And so it was like I knew I could feel that he didn't really want to be here. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But you still have to have that conversation. You still have to do the, do these things. Yeah, yeah. Still uh, work at the end of the day. You yeah. Know? But I, I, I can, I can sympathize with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that would say my that would be my worst one. I didn't have too many bad ones though. What What about um somebody that you would love to talk to? Kanye West. Mm. That's my favorite artist. Me so too. Uh, even though I think he's crazy sometimes. But his craziness turns into genius, geniusness. I don't even know if that's a word. Probably have you not. watched it? Um, no, I have not. I've been on the road since like part two released tonight. Yeah, I got today. I, yeah, I gotta, I gotta watch it because I haven't, um, I haven't had a chance. Like I've been rolling, bro. Like I got into the states and I've been in Virginia, South Carolina, went skiing. Like I just, I've been rolling, so I haven't had the time to to check it out. Have and you now, watched it yet? And man? Now I'm here. Yeah, you watched it. Yeah, well, like, watch, watch it again. Okay. It's super. Every, everybody's telling me that it's pretty dope. Dog. It's I ain't, we ain't gonna get into it. We can watch it later, but it's really good. Okay. It's, yeah. With you being a, a Kanye West fan, like this is gonna, it's really. It, and I ain't gonna lie, man. I kind of got emotional because every every creator, every artist strives at one point to get to somewhere. Right. Yeah. We always need kind of a, a little help getting somewhere. Yeah. And you get to see that process with Ye. Yep. And if you, we know Ye now, right? We know yeah. who he is, the, the worldwide global phenomenon that is Kanye West. Yeah. We get to see him during those times where he's pumping his own gas, where he's driving his own car, where he doesn't have, you know, anything. Yeah. You know, um, but his mom. Yeah. And, man, it's, it's incredible, man. His mom, man. Yeah, I got to check it out. I know it's dope. A lot of people, because they know how big of a fan I am, they're like, yo, you got to see it. You got to see it. You got to check it out. Like, So I'm going to check it out when I got time to really like sit down, and I don't want to be doing anything. I'm going to take my time and just watch it and enjoy it. Give me one question you would ask Kanye. Whew. One question that I would ask Kanye. Yeah, I'm Kanye West. Hmm. How did... How did Oh, that's a good one. I, I would ask, I would ask, when it comes to creativity, do you dare to be different or does it or organically comes out that way? Because if you listen to every song, every album, it's, it's, so, it's different. You know what I'm saying? And like, where did he pull his inspirations from to have these different sounds? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like... Is so crazy. He's birthed so many artists off of all his all his different albums. You know what I'm saying? Yep. All these different sounds, and I think it's just the producer in him to be able to do that. But yeah, it's just like, is that organic? Or are you like, all right, I did that. I'm I'm gonna go over here and try something different. You know what I'm saying? And so that that's what I would ask. I definitely want to know his creative process. Doug, I'm excited to see what him and Jack Harlow do. 
Because mm. yeah, you know, I heard him talking about that in his career. Yeah, uh, he's he's in. I want to say in love, but he, he yeah he loves Jack Harlow. Yeah, right. Yeah, and uh, Jack can spit, man. Yeah, yeah. That'd be one I would want to sit down with is Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow. I think he'd be fun to sit. Out down of everybody, with. Jack Harlow. Not everybody. I'm just saying. Uh, like, <laughs> in, in, in general, I'm about, I'm about to pull your car I, my, right my, here. My number one. My number one that I would like to sit down with uh, probably be Hove. Mm, I'd want to sit down with Hove. That's another good one too. Or fifth. Ooh, fifth. Yeah, that fifth is my second. Fifth is my second. He was actually my favorite artist in the time where he was peaked. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But yeah, he fell off. So I, I gotta. Kanye Don't do that. that. Kanye Don't do his, that. Kanye, no, bro. When he was when he did a diss record and he was in a mob suit in a full <laughs> breast suit, I was like, man. And Kelly Can was killing him. I'm like, bro, like, you making me look bad. Because all my other homies was dip set all day. Yeah, in Virginia? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They had dip set all day. So I'm like, nah, 50 got this. He been crushing everybody in the disc record, talking big smack. And then him, Young Buck, in, in the game or whatever, in suits or whatever, diss and dip set. And I was just like, ah. Oh. And then let's be real, that, the, the, the camera... Curtis, <laughs> messing with your head, boy. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, that's so hard. That's so hard. I you want to hate it, too? Yeah, I want to hate it. But I'm, like, no, I'm going to take off this blue shirt. Go to PK. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yo, so I have to say, like, yeah, 50 seconds, though. Yeah, just off of his TV side, his mogul, he's a mogul. You know what I'm saying? How he transitioned from t uh, music to TV and other business deal, with, even with vitamin water yeah, and man. stuff like that. Like, he's getting it. Um, if we're going outside of music, Shaq. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, man. yeah. I, I mean, I'd be like, yo, Shaq, let's just do a three-hour dinner. I don't even, we don't even need the mics on, the cameras on. Like, nah, I, I just want to chop it up because he, he has a big heart. Mm -hmm. You see what he, you know, the way he gives back to the community and his business sense is amazing. Incredible. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, like. Yeah, I would chop it up with him, too. I would like to talk to him more about, like, the Q-Dog stuff, right? Like, mm -hmm. the fraternity stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm surprised, like, him, Steve Harvey, all, like, all the q Dog, all yeah, the famous yeah, Q-Dogs yeah, yeah. haven't got down and, like, did, like, a podcast or something. Because that would be hilarious. Yeah, I guess once you get out of, I mean, it's always a, a brotherhood, but I guess once you get out of a school, you know, it's kind of like they all kind of go their separate ways unless it's, like, homecoming or something. Who the you're you're a basketball fan, right? Yeah. Who's your number one player? Who like who's your favorite player? Now? Ever. Oh, ever Kobe Bryant. Kobe? Yeah, Kobe. Were Bryant. you always a Kobe fan? Yeah, yeah. I was always a Kobe fan. Yeah. I uh people laugh at me. I wasn't even I don't even think I was old enough to be a Jordan fan, to be honest. Cause I didn't get into basketball until I saw uh Michael Jordan on the Wizards. Cause I'm from Virginia, so yeah. we could go to the Wizard game. That's really when I started getting in basketball. Two thousand Three, yeah, yeah, it was 2003 was because he dropped the Jordan 18s. That was the flat cover one, um, that came with the 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 uh, the suitcase. Remember that? Yeah, Those yeah, sneakers came with the suitcase. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so yeah, I, I was I was late to basketball. I was always a football guy. Where did you? How did you become an Oregon Duck fan? My cousin used to play Stephen Moore. Really? Yeah, he was a starting corner for them in 2003. That's um, yeah, so that was a uh, um, who was the quarterback during that time? Uh, Harrington? Yep. It was yep, Harrington. Yep, yep, yeah. And then they had um, Jonathan, uh, I forgot. Stewart? His, yeah, Stewart as yeah. the running back. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, during that time, yeah, my cousin was, a, and that's the only connection. I, I just met that cousin like two years ago. Really? He, yeah, he lives out in L.A. He's actually a, a music composer now. He, uh, he does scores for mute movies out there. And then he also has his own EP, jazz and stuff. He plays the bass, piano, yeah. Like, yeah. That's dope. Yeah, but that's that was my only connection. I was like, oh, okay, that's my... Because my, my dad is, is not really a big sports guy. Mm -hmm. You know, he likes the Giants, he likes the Mets, um, but it's only because he's from New York and that's it. Like, it ain't like... I, he, got, he got Giants gear now, but it ain't... You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he's not, like, die hard, you know? So, reason why I'm an Atlanta Falcon fan is most of my teams is has some sentimental value to it. Like, uh, my first football game was an Atlanta Falcon game um, that I went to. They are playing Dallas. So what I'm, year was this? 2002. It was Vic's rookie year. So, Marshall Falk was over there during that time, wasn't he? Like, towards the end of his career, I think. No. He wasn't? Mm -mm. Or was Marshall Falk? Uh, he was a Ram, wasn't he? Yeah, Always yeah. a Ram. Yeah, was he, he was a St. Louis Ram. St. Louis, oh, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Falk wasn't over there. Who yeah. was the running back over there? 
Uh, Jones? Um, it was uh, Warwick. Warwick Dunn. That's right. Yeah. 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 So he was on the cover of Madden one of those years. Yeah, yeah. And then you, you had to, when, when Vic blew up, you had DVD. So you had uh, Dunn, Vic, and uh, Duckett was our power back. And then what what made you be a, an Atlanta fan? Uh, Atlanta fan, yeah, that was the Atlanta Falcon fan because I was the, that was my first NFL game I went to with my dad. Damn, um, it was that or the Cowboys, and I can't do the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do the Cowboys, so I just saw when I saw like the black and red because they were wearing the black. Atlanta was wearing the black jerseys then, so I saw that black and red. I'm like, oh, that joint goes so hard. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah, I'm an Atlanta Falcon fan. Um, favorite favorite state that you've traveled to in the side of the states. Right. Oh, Utah. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like I like Utah because you can do it's the best of all worlds: outdoors, city life, party life, chill life. Like it's it has everything. You know what I'm saying? The cost of living a little kind of high, but uh, oh, man, you tell me. <laughs> now, I've been trying to get into a house. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the only downfall of all living. You know, people from California coming up here and stacking up the prices. Yeah, facts. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah, tell yeah. them that though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, no, Utah. Yeah, it has everything. Well, man, um, I gotta go pick up my family. Yeah, yeah, go do that. Go do that. Go do that. It was but, always nice chopping it up with you. But uh, Jr. Man, what's what's the socials? Where can people follow you and and follow the journey? Oh yeah, Mr. Jr. Star. Uh, make sure you go check me out on all socials. Um, also got an EP out called The Chase. Uh, that's on all streaming platforms. Uh, yeah. Awesome, man. Bangarang. What's up, my boy? You want to shout out your socials? Yeah, get your socials yeah. in. Drop them yeah, in. Yeah, drop them yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to cut this part hey, this is, <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Mr. International. This is Mr. Uh, local. What, no, you ain't local. No, nah, Mr. Regional. Mr. Regional. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Regional. <laughs> he going to be he gonna be global, too, though. He He'll be, be a, Yeah, well, that's why I keep pushing him. But yeah. if, he, if he don't start charging that damn camera. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yeah, I appreciate you, Drake. Oh, Bangerang the DJ, Twitter, Instagram. Just released a new remix with my man Santos Hawar. Pasito Pro Habito, the Bangarang remix out everywhere Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music. They're going to think yeah. you're Dominican. You keep how on long, speaking that Spanish. How long hey. did it take you to practice how to say that? Yeah, hey, listen. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> He's like, so how do you say it? Yeah, okay, for can for you a minute. Can like, you voice note it to yeah. me, please? <laughs> Yo, it, yeah, it took me a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you got it. You got yeah, it. Good I got job. It. Good I, job. I got I, it. I appreciate your time, JR, man. Um, I appreciate you just being who you are. You know, we, every time we talk, man, there's some jewels that I get from you that uh, that I, I know that with your experience, I can't get nowhere else. So I appreciate that, man. I appreciate you, man. Bangarang. Hey. Start using that damn camera. Got you. <laughs> got you. 